Well, welcome to the backyard. I'm Joe. I'm Mike. And uh, today we just want to talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, the season that we're in here. We want to talk a little bit about alfalfa. Uh, we still have alfalfa available for seeding. Uh, I know we're, we're pushing the end of May here, but uh, we still got some alfalfa left. We've been selling the heck out of it, but uh, uh, Mikey, especially up there in, in northern Minnesota or, or western Minnesota, uh, we still got some alfalfa left. If you aren't going to plant this spring, we still have some for the summer seeding as well. Yeah, we're uh, we're just in the process of securing our summer summer inventory. Alfalfa seeds really tight, but at this point, we're not real worried. We're very very happy with the Dairyland people and the uh, inventory they're getting us. They keep telling us they're out, then they keep finding us more. So I feel real good about that. Another thing with spring, uh, the the lick tubs. We have beef customers and and dairy customers going to pasture and bringing out heifers and bringing out cows. The, uh, the lick tubs are very convenient, very sound nutrition, and, and very simple to use. So we've got three, four different options. We'd sure love to discuss those with you. Yeah. Um, once we plant, yeah, go ahead, Joe. One, one thing about our lick tubs is our lick tubs are all 250 pounds. Most of the competition will be 200, 225 pounds. Unlike a lot of the competition, ours you can't bite and chew. You actually have to lick. It's no different than licking a lollipop. You, can, you can't bite it, you can't chew it. So it's over and over and over. And it'll consume, what, a quarter of a pound? Yeah, the, do you want to show them, Joe, how to lick them yeah. now? <laughs> you know what, Mike, you can get down there and try okay. it. But they, actually, they don't taste bad. No, they don't. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's in a molasses uh, form, so it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Something else about the tubs compared to the competition, these are a cook tub. Um, so very uniform, cooked very consistently, and, and that helps with the consumption. A number of the competitors are yeah. a chemically hardened tub or just a press tub, and like Joe was saying, they're usually not hard enough where the cattle can actually chew on them and bite them yeah. and eat them more, more like a, a feed than a supplement. Right, right, especially when it gets a little wet too from rain and it gets real bad. So, But the lick tubs are, you know, like I said, we got dry cow tubs, we got mineral tubs, 21%, we got stock busters, uh, we got an all natural 14%. So we can pretty much cover all the all your needs on that. Um, twine, it's getting that season, Mike. Yeah, twine and acid. Yeah, it's been a been a late spring, but uh, not only do we sell the seed, we we work with customers and help educate them on the, the products that go with it. You know, Joe mentioned the the hay preservative. We have a, a blended product which does does a wonderful job on keeping hay from spoiling. That's put up with a little too much moisture, and and in the part of the state we live in, for those of you who who've never made hay. It's hard to get hay truly dry here, isn't oh, it, Joe? It's, it's really difficult to get it under, under 18, 20%. That's usually where it stops. We have a lot of dew, a lot of humidity, and it yeah. becomes real difficult, especially yeah. with the big squares now. Yeah. Big round balers, like you said, the, the density on them. Yeah. Oh, it's tremendously packed, so tight. So. Yeah, it's, it's an area I wish I would have paid more attention in chemistry. You know, yeah. The ambient temperature and humidity, it can only dry so much. So this, this preservative we sell does a wonderful job, very, very economical. And then last year, I J and L in the backyard started selling twine. Yeah. And and we'd, we'd sure love to fulfill your needs. Didn't think it would be real big, Joe, but it's sold a lot of twine last season, you know, didn't you? It, it's something I was oblivious to. I didn't I didn't realize the market was that strong, but when you start getting two, three, four farmers, producers coming in here asking for twine, we got twine in, and, and I was uh, shocked at how much twine that we sold. Uh, this year we went out and we did a little bit of pre-booking and stuff, uh, kind of gradually building our inventory up for twine. Yeah, and we got the plastics, the 2,000, the 4,000, 440 is the 9,000. Even got some Thiso 3,800, got a couple pellets of that. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of twine too. Hey, so. Joel mentioned plastic, just one other little side note. We, we do have the sheets of plastic yes. too. For any of you guys and, and farms out there that are maybe chopping your, your, your corn silage or haylage this time of the year, I guess, I hope we're not doing corn silage yet. Um, yeah, we have it all available right here. Our, a lot of this stuff, if you order it, it'll come out to you on the road truck. The plastics, things like that, you order it, next time the road truck is out there coming through the area, they'll drop it off. So pretty nice, convenient package that way as well. Yeah. So, so if you need any alfalfa seed now or in the summer, let us know. Lick tubs for the, uh, for the heifers and the beef cattle, or twine as you're baling. Yeah. And uh, you know what? It's uh, kind of covering all the bases here for the alfalfa, the seed going in the ground, the harvesting. 
the, uh, the you know the preserving the alfalfa, covering up alfalfa, the forage piles, the plastic, and everything else. So, hey, thank you for uh, tuning in today. I hope you learned something. Give us a call at the backyard. You know, we, we not only got milk and cheese and pizza and all that stuff, uh, and a lot of Jake and Amos, but you got me and Mike too. Yeah, we like to see you guys. Yeah, hi to everybody who sees me on TV. All right, thanks. Yard. Yard.